Hello and welcome back to another game of Dota 2. You're watching, of course, Starlighter Star Series. It is Season 8. We are at Day 11 and this will be our third game of a day where we see five games in total. Of course, I'm not by myself. I'm actually joined by two people right here. With me is Nahas, our stats man, and of course my co-caster, Mott. Welcome back. Thank you for having me here. Of course, we just witnessed one of the best Dota games I've seen in some time with Relax, you're doing fine versus Empire. Uh, I urge everyone to check out the VOD when that is, of course, finished up. But for now, Relax is going to go ahead and go up against the Retry, which, of course, is famous because PGG, the great Enigma himself, is on this team. And, of course, they've been around for some time. I'm not really sure how they're doing the standings, but we can always check that out. Yeah, let's, uh, let's just do that straight away. Like, why not uh, the Retry? Well, they've played five games in total. They've actually won two and uh, lost three. Now, of course, one of those wins is a win that they got because 4FC dropped out. So uh, the other one is, I believe, up against OSG, but not 100% sure. Maybe it might be up against Cupid either or up against Flipside. I guess it's up against Flipside, actually. Um, but yeah, they're not doing all too hot. That's just uh, the point that I was trying to make. In the meantime, relax. I mean... We just saw them. I want to say they're doing great because we've seen two amazing games from them yesterday against Fnatic, today against Empire. And even though their ranking doesn't really show it, we, they're ranked sixth, but they have played nine games, won, f won five, lost four. So in terms of wins and losses, they're not doing all too hot. But, well, I definitely think they're on the right path. They are, I mean, in this composition, they haven't played together for a fairly long time, so... They are on the right track to be one of the top contenders in maybe the next season of Starlighters, or at least maybe if they stop losing, they could also be heading still to uh, to this season of the playoffs. But they're doing well, though it doesn't show on the rankings that much. Yeah, yeah, and it's a team filled with really just strong CIS players, players that have been around for a while. I mean, you talk about Dread, that guy's a legend, really, so... Yeah. It, 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 they're up against a team that should be formidable, but certainly it's it's definitely a winnable game for Poseidon, considering Five they are they, they've beaten a couple of decent teams. They came close to Empire just a little bit of a uh, time ago, but now we have the retry here with Alchemist pick up, and it's the it's the third game we see Alchemist in, and it's also the third game he's picked up first, I believe, followed by a Venomancer from Relax and a hero that is very strong with his Plague Wards if you can get those leveled up. But still, another Alchemist pick up this time for the retry. Yeah, I. I like the hero. I do. I like him most as support, but in previous game it shows that he doesn't always have to be uh, a passive kind of carry. I mean, yeah, why not? Let's uh, let's see ourselves another alchemist. It does mean that both of these teams Five went for Venomancer and Alchemist before going for the Elder Titan, who's still in the pool. Oh, never mind. There he is. <laughs> well, so much for that. <laughs> so much for that indeed. Well, that's a hero that we haven't seen. Well, we haven't seen him banned, but we have not seen him picked yet. Hello, Viper. Yeah, that's... I wasn't expecting that hero, but it works. Uh, against an alert Titan works against Venomancer. Both squishy and take damage. Might, you know, actually be able to kill them relatively easily. Viper's a hero that I personally love playing, because, let's be honest, he's like a one-button hero. Uh, he's easy to build, he's easy to play. Corrosive skin's quite good now, as uh, well as another Toxic. You only need one level in Poison Attack early on, because it's got no cooldown, where it used to be three seconds at its first level. So Viper's a hero that's seen some play. It's seen also not a whole lot of success. I believe it's like, the last time I checked, it wasn't the highest win rate in the world. For good reason. He, he doesn't go super late. He can work really well early game and wreck early game. And he's going up against early game heroes. So I think it's a smart pick up here. But at the same time, Relax also has an Lord Titan, which, let's be honest, that hero is pretty damn good. That is, uh, yes. That is the right way to say it. Pretty damn good indeed. We'll see how, uh, how the Retry deals with that Elder Titan, and perhaps indeed with the early aggression that a Viper can throw out. Uh, they do ban a Dragon Knight. Uh, they, I mean, Viper is Ten most likely going to be in the mid lane, so they're going to probably ban out some heroes that they don't want to face middle, and Dragon Knight apparently being remaining. one of those, of course, one of those heroes that has a lot of armor, and is just very sturdy, doesn't really easily Reason die to a Viper Strike straight away, so... We'll see, maybe they also ban out the Puck. Puck also a, a hero that can dodge the Viper Strike, it can silence up the Viper. Team we'll see though. Relax. They're doing fine. They are doing fine. I think their draft is, is, is something that they're pretty comfortable with. A Venomancer, very all-rounded, well-rounded support. An Elder Titan, you can never really go wrong with that hero either. And they have the luxury of picking and banning in uh, like your first ban, then, then the pick straight away. So they are indeed doing fine. They ban out two supports. The ban as well as the Crystal Main. Looks like, I mean, a bad ban. 
When I see that Ben up against a Viper, I'm kind of assuming that maybe Relax thought they were gonna go for a Viper offlane with an Abaddon backing him up, because we have seen that a couple of times before. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah. yeah, that's no longer possible. No, and uh, anytime you can get a, an Abaddon out of the pool is probably a smart play. Mm. Crystal made they Ben out as well. That's a hero that could have went well for their own team, but they decided against it. They need some sort of lockdown because they have Venomancer Elder Titan. That's not the highest amount of lockdown in the world. Um, they still have some reserve time to think about what they want to go. On the other side, Viper is going to be slowing people down with Viper Strike, which is a very nice ability just to kite people around. Uh, there's nobody that they need to kite particularly yet, but it's just nice to have it. Rubik is an excellent hero against Viper because guess what? You only have one spell you can steal, and that's going to be Viper Strike. So, um, pretty much any time you want to steal a decent spell, you just hit R and you click on Viper. And there you go. Boom. Yeah, it's, uh, it's pretty strong indeed, and Retry have to be... Wow, I was gonna say they have to be careful to make yeah, sure that their heroes that they pick up from this point onward don't really, aren't really too hurt by a Viper Strike that hits them. But Lashrak is actually a hero that does get quite hurt by that because normally he wants to run around with his Edict and his Nova up and just be slightly evasive or just slightly just continuously run around. And with the Rubik there, he's already having issue with that. If he has a Viper Strike on him, then it's gonna be even worse. On top of that, Rubik steals Lashrak spells, and uh, first of all, you can't really steal a bad spell from Lashrak. And second, the, skill, the skills that Rubik steals from Lashrak, if it's a Split Earth, the Split Earth from Rubik is better than the one of Lashrak's because it has no yeah. cast timer. Same thing goes for the Edict, of course. So, it's uh, I, I'm not sure why they picked that into a Rubik, to be honest. They have, they have to have a plan with this. They have to have a strategy. Yeah, they're not going to go for Shadow Demon, I don't think, which we saw a couple days ago, and that would be awful, because that didn't really work well for 4 FC, sadly enough. But Alchemist Stun into Leshrac Stun is a pretty good combo, but you mentioned Rubik, and you're absolutely right, because not only do you talk about the animations, you talk about Telekinesis. You literally lift somebody up, and then Splurt Earth, and boom, they're dead. There's nothing yes. they can do about it. But, I mean, because you can, that's a combo you can make on your own. You talked about Sealing Edict as well. Guess what? You're pushing our tower, we're just going to steal that spell, because it does have the animation. You can't use something right after the Edict. So, I, I'm also questioning this pickup from PGG. I don't really know why he would go for a less wreck in this scenario. It's not the best idea. Um, if they want to try to push, there's plenty of other heroes available, like a Pugna, but then again, same thing goes, you know, Rubik steals Pugna spells, and then again, boom, it's a problem. So, 34 seconds for Relax, you're doing fine. They get pretty much the best hero that they can get in the Rubik in this scenario. They go for the Juggernaut, which is even better, considering the amount of damage they're going to do to squish heroes like Viper and Leshrac with Omni Slash. And Venomancer Juggernaut, Juggernaut, excuse me, is is an old school combo that works extraordinarily well. What the hell is going on? Well, they they have got a tactic banned out. I mean, this is this has to be a um, a Pogger strat. I am kind of reminded of uh, Moscow Five <laughs> by this this lineup. Just go for for something really weird and then just keep running at the enemy. If you have good heroes for that, then you might be able to make it work. That's what Moscow Five used to do, and they actually did make it work for uh, for some of the times remaining. however if you run at heroes you normally need the movement speed and venomancer happens to be one of the best heroes Radiant to stop you from running at people especially early on in the game so this is going to be quite troublesome same thing goes for rubik actually also one of those heroes that can just stop you literally just pick you up and drop you down on your teammates and um, make sure that your your initiation kind of drops but if you the, the Tusk and Leshrac actually work well together, of course. You've got yourself the Ice Shards Five that can set up for the Split Earth, remaining. which is great. But I wonder how much effect it will have, because Juggernaut can it's Blade Fury himself out. I think Rubik and Venomance are going to be fairly safe, and now the Titan is just too tanky to care about it. Yeah. yeah. I mean... I don't know what to say about this draft other than PGG is my hero for picking up a Tuscar. <laughs> this is a hero I've wanted to see for a while, and I don't think I've ever seen a... I don't know what the stats are. Nahaz will probably get it up for us after yep. the draft is done. I want to know how many games Tusk has been played in. I'm feeling like it's less than 10, I'd imagine, and no, for good reason. No, 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 no. Uh, Lions really? I picked it a couple of times, and other teams as well. I think it's more than 10. Uh, that's really? here by a uh, bet. You think less than 10? I think more than 10. Well, either way, this draft is amazing. I mean, the snowball gets the alchemist closer, which is good because he does have a problem with being kited. Um, Leshrac will hit his stun like you mentioned, coming out with the ice shards. Snowball is pretty good. Shadow blade. I just don't know where they're going to land the, the tusk. Usually, you see him as a mid hero, and he very well may be because Viper, like you mentioned, can go on an off lane, can go solo safe lane. Alchemist even could be a support if necessary. I mean, we don't know where this draft is going, and that's kind of the thing. But relax, you're doing fine. Aren't really going to the strengths of the opposing team. It's about the strength 
strengths of themselves. What do they pick up next for them? They have supports that get the Elder Titan. They have Juggernaut. I imagine a mid-hero. It is going to be the Storm Spirit, which is a lot better. Like you mentioned, there's heroes that run at people uh, on the retry. Storm Spirit's a hero that doesn't really care, nor does Venomancer. So these are heroes that have kiting ability, and the retry are going to be in a bit of trouble, I feel like. Yeah, I'm, I'm secretly hoping that we're going to see the Enigma as last pick. Um, I'm kind of, like... I, I kind of have, like, my, my sense, my brain says, you know what, this is not going to work, the retry, you've just been outdrafted, but I really hope that they can make it work, because that would be so amazing to watch. Five seconds remaining. Like, it's it's a do it or die kind of lineup, right? Either this fails it horribly, is. or it's going to be going so well that or we're actually fine, it's not going to be doing anything about it, because, you know, they're it, too stunned, and they yes. can't do anything. I feel like everyone's cheering for Tuscar. Everyone's going to be cheering yes. for this hero. Yes. Because it's okay, just like it's casters, a hero that you never see. We are. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, well, listen, who wouldn't be biased in this scenario? True. Like, we're going to be objective about it, but still, Tuscar <laughs> is like, how often do you see this hero? Uh, somebody saying Snowball Sniper in chat, maybe. I. <laughs> Maybe, well, if I you look know. at the Tusk and the Shrek as a support combination and Alchemist as a carry, Viper mid, they need an offlaner. Mm. That would be the That's logical true. thing. If they're gonna, like, if you're gonna go for an offlaner and you have this kind of draft, Enigma would be a possible option. Oh God, PGG Enigma! What I would give, what I would give to he see that. He has been playing offlane a couple of times. He was also played offlane Nick's Assassin quite a few times, but he's also sometimes played the carry for his uh, for his newish team, but. Uh, depends on what Nubik is going to play, because he was also the safe laner a couple of times, or mid. It, it's kind of it's kind of switching around, but then Hart has been playing mid most uh, most of all, so... Curious to see how they're going to do this. They only have 15 seconds left. Which hero is he going to surprise us with? Is it going to be a boring Nature's Prophet, or is it going to be an amazing hero that none of us has ever thought about just yet? Oh, never mind. Oh, uh, uh, yeah. I was really hoping that's, for that's something. That's not what we were expecting. Like nope. <laughs> yeah, we were like... Sniper? Yeah. Bot? Nope, it's a Wind Ranger. Alright, whatever. Okay. Well, they had to do something secure, I guess. The Shackle is kind of nice, uh, though, of course, Wind Ranger has got most of her spells that are very good to steal for Rubik. They, you can't really steal any bad spells from her either, just like Lashrak. Talking about spells to steal for Rubik, he has. He's got a field day here, because Tusk has got some fun spells to steal as well, and I'd say fun more than anything else, because how often are you a Rubik in a game and you get the chance to steal spells from a Tuskar, right? That doesn't happen often. Yeah. So Dredd's Dredd gonna is, have Dredd is gonna have a field day. Dredd yes. is gonna be... He's like a kid in a candy store, to use a cliche. Uh, this is literally any spell you steal is going to be amazing. Let's oh, let's just go times. through the lineup here. That's right, got it. Got oh, it, yes. Oh, wow. Oh, no, 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 no. During oh, 6.79. I oh. win because if it's already four ah. times there, I mean, imagine. Ah, that's... you're right. Yep, yep. He yep. said 15 and 11. You're right. All right, yep. all right. My apologies. Yep. I was wrong. I, was I wrong. wouldn't have guessed. Uh, I wouldn't have guessed 26 though. But yes, I win. Well, let's take well, a look at what the retry uh, has <laughs> in store for us. Hey, it looks like we're gonna see Tusk mid because Heart or Love is playing Tusk. He will be playing in the mid lane. He has been pulled a couple of tangles, sitting on a fast bottle of money. There, as we have PGG playing the Alchemist, has got himself a smoke in his inventory. I am actually thinking he is going to be a supportive to Alchemist because he has <coughs> pulled some tangles to that tu to that uh, Tusker. <coughs> Nubik is going to play the Viper. He's going to be farming on the bottom lane by the looks of it, and then Eid. He is a support Lashrak, and that leaves the Wind Ranger. No fear will play that one. And I think that we might be seeing an aggressive trailing with an Alchemist, a Lashrak, and a Wind Ranger then. The battle begins. Yeah, I think you may be right, but on the side of Relax, you're doing fine. We've seen them in one game already. Down in the bottom lane, the off lane Elder Titan is going to be Shacklow. Heading up to the mid lane. Check it out, Solo Mid Storm Spirit going to be played by TMW in the top defensive trial and is going to be KSI on the Venomancer. Dread will be on the Rubik, who is going to have quite the game, hopefully, and then Nexus to round it out on the Juggernaut as well. And they will go ahead and look for a gank mid from the side of the retry, it looks like, and they could definitely do this easily on Storm. Look on, on Tamawal's positioning, he knows it. They ha there is a war there, they saw them moving up, and he'll be just fine. Takes a stun. But it's clear under his tower, the hasten of the Alchemist doesn't really make that big of a difference anymore. And they continue rotating top, so we'll see how this aggressive trail and it's going to pan out. I guess if they can slow down Nexus, then they're already doing doing well. Because if Viper, as long as Viper gets farm, as long as he's doing well in the bottom lane, 
it doesn't really matter how well the retry themselves do on the top lane as long as they can slow down, relax. And PG and E, they have been scouted out. They smoke up though, and it looks like they're going mid again. This time the ward won't scout them out because of the smoke. Tim Wild still positioned extremely careful on that bottom side. In comes the ice shards though, and he's gonna get locked in. They're gonna try and throw the stun. The split earth will follow up. Tim Wild will be our first blood here in this game. And Eid will take it home. That is a pretty important pickoff to get. Hart will hereby have marked his mark. Hmm. Let's put his mark on the mid lane. There we go. Yes, he really has. <laughs> and Ice Shards have been effective already. And that was a cut off the path of retreat, as you can see from over here. So that means TMW couldn't get out of there, which of course gave them that first blood. And he was doing okay before that. So it's unfortunate that he got ganked in that scenario. The smoke, like you talked about, secured the kill for the most part. Down bottom, Smackle's taking poison attack slows. Of course, as you can see, he's sitting in the secret shower side shop. Excuse me. He can eat his way out if necessary. He will do just that. He knows that there was a gank coming. He's going to try to make his way. The unstable's getting charged. He's going to be thrown. They might even dive this uh, for a okay. kill. Oh, this split earth miss is yeah. just barely. And the spirit hits already up on two people, so Shaikla will be hitting like a truck if they come back for him. And, I mean, this is the downside of, of a rotating duo, like the Lashrak and like the Alchemist. They will... Oh, wait a second, Wind Ranger? Nah, no, she's fine. But they will be getting behind. If, if they continue doing this, and they don't get successful kills, then they'll drop behind really fast, and, and then Relax is going to be able to play their game just fine. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, and... You know, they, they already are kind of playing their game. In fact, TMW is doing work on Hart in the mid lane. And, and the reason being is that he's the Storm Spirit. And with, of course, Overload and Static Remnant, he can harass. Whereas Ice Shards do some damage, but not nearly enough. You can see it does take quite a bit of mana to span that in comparison. Bottom lane, there's more poison attacks going, and the Unstable is being charged. Yeah, this time the Split Earth is not going to hit. The Lushrak is actually very far away, but it doesn't matter. Viper takes it. That uh, Nether Toxin helping him out a bit there as well. Actually picks up the second level of that right now. So that's the second kill of the game. PGG involved in that. The Shrek is trying to pull and stack, getting some experience on the side. Mid lane, mid lane, mid lane. Oh, that's a kill. Boom. Exactly the harass wow. that you were talking about. I mean, Well, what happened was, in the mid lane, you had actually the... There was a lot of damage and he had snowballed. TMW was at 10 HP and he bottled up as he got under his tower. And he turned it around with a static remnant. It was a huge yeah. kill. I mean, that's also the trouble of the ice shards. I mean, they're great for locking someone in if you're trying to chase that person down, but they are not doing anything for you if you try to run away. Then, if you want to have something for you, you have to have the uh, frozen sigil. Oh, wait a second, other titan, what are you doing? The edict, the damage, hello kill. Second kill of the oh my God. viper, as actually alchemist still goes down though, so at least Shackalo gets a return kill this time. Yeah, but it's still not worth it because you're giving viper the kills, and you really don't want to. Yeah. Like, that's something that you really can't afford, is, is letting this fight. He's not, like, the best farmer, but he's still a farmer, nonetheless. So giving him gold and experience is not what you want. Despite, at least he did get something in return. Mid -blank, oh, mid yeah, the haste rune, the snowball, one more hit needed. <laughs> Boom, you're dead. Tower, though, tower. Bottle charge. He's, he's fine. Haste rune, MVP. Heart, love, gets himself out safe. Gets a kill, so that means it's four to two. Actually, pretty decent job for the retry. The... the Again, though, they need to hold the on to this because they can't let go of the pressure because the moment that they do, there will be a Juggernaut waiting for them. And juggernaut is not doing too well, as in he's not free farming as much as you would expect from a free farming hero because, you know, he's not entirely free farming, but he is still not doing bad. Vi Viper is doing better, but an a Juggernaut is going to be a big man as once he reaches level 6, regardless of how many last hits he has. Yeah, and he's still getting it effectively. They've run the, of course, Venomancer in the jungle with his Plague Wards. He's getting a couple of creep camps, so he's he's feeling pretty comfortable. Jug does have space boots right now. He'll have his Omni Slash in a couple of minutes here. Um, he's already level 4. Um, there was a bit of action coming in, but Ball Lightning came through, and actually Heart's getting chased. Unstable already going now. This is bad. Yeah, very bad. There's no way he's getting out of that. Still punches, but doesn't matter. He dies. PGG gets himself out after stunning himself up, but... I mean, I guess it's like once Team of Wild is level 6, which he now, I mean, he's now level 7, a big ass snowball is not gonna come by surprise, so he is able to just zip himself away. That's something that, uh, yeah, that you should know. Yeah, and we talked about it. It's a hero that runs at people, snowballs at people. That doesn't matter when you have ball lightning. It really is not a problem. Mm -hmm. You just say, zip, alright, we're done here. You're not chasing yeah. after me. So, 
it continues to be they really needed I think to do a little bit more with this early game and they need to roam through with the Tuscar to another lane to drive and grab a kill and they might do just that with the six minute rune which is going to be bottom sadly so it looks like Tamar Wild is going to go ahead and pick it up and that's a double damage too which means that's uh, even more damage coming up for a storm spirit so he's going to be the one doing the ganky potentially oh he does get it just in time wow that was close yeah, that was pretty damn close indeed. Yeah, double damage rune is uh, not something that's a pretty side up on the storm. Uh, Next is in the meantime, level 5. He actually takes quite a bit of harassment here from this Wind Ranger. Wind Ranger, no fear, sitting at level 5 as well and actually being uh, a little bit ahead compared to the Juggernaut. Gonna be having a big impact in this game if you look at her amount of farm that she gets for this offlane. Compare her to the Elder Titan and she gets a lot more. Might not be getting. Uh, a, a lot more levels, so she is getting more levels, but not as much as you might think. But Shaklo is just only 12 last hits compared to the 25 of the Wind Ranger. So that's a big difference right there. For the retry, it's also important to rotate their Viper at some point. He's sitting on 1100 gold. Looks to be building up a hood, I am actually thinking about. What do you think he's going for? Or is he going to go for fast mech for his team? That's something that's... It's mech, I think. Yeah? Yeah, that's what you see 90% of the time on, on Vipers, is because they want to fight early, they're an early, they're an early team fighter. You don't need items on a Viper, Aghanim Scepter's okay. Uh, it's actually really good, but I prefer the mech just so they can fight early on and just go for aggression here. And that's, I think, exactly what he's going to do with that treads up with, of course, the... Uh, you can see the Ring of Bislays as well as the Ring of Regen done, which is part of the headdress. But now coming mid, there is a smoke for PGG. They're going to go up to the jungle and they're going to try to find a pickoff here. They know they can't kill TMW, even with an unstable. It's not going to be enough, I don't think. Um, so they will... Um, actually, yeah. they're deciding against it, maybe going back down. Nice I'm not sure if they can get this. Ghoul and Roshan for PGG, by the way. No, and they, they don't because T Team of Wild, they saw the smoke happen. So they're not going to do this. The stun will go up on PGG. He stuns himself under the enemy tower. Well, that's going to be getting you a kill for sure. Vortex up on hard. Tuscar will die as well. That's going to be two kills. They saw the edge of the smoke when it popped because, uh, you know, they, they just popped it very close to the edge. And then they saw the courier move in as well with the ward that they had. So they were very well aware of what's going to happen. Damon Wild knows that he can zip away from both the unstable concoction and the um, snowball that's coming in. So couldn't really... Uh, oh, no, they can't zip away from that one. Now he will actually die. That's a bra brilliant pickup of Eid. Only Slash will still take him down though. Hello, Nexus. Welcome to the fight. So... Yeah, I mean, he did go down, surprisingly enough. He was kind of low under the tower, taking eight damage. That was actually a little bit of a misplay, but you're right. He can un he can zip away from Unstable as well as the Snowball, which is, if you're coming in from the side like that, I don't know what they thought was going to happen. Like, you see it played out, obviously. They snowballed. The Unstable was not in time. It's just not a good play. But top lane, a little bit of a dive going on, no fear. And, well, he's fearing, I think. But he is, will have team coming out and helping him here. Yeah, I don't think it's going to be in time, or maybe it will. The Shackle will not latch, though. Power Shot will hit, and the E. It might actually be enough Nexus with that haste rune. Oh, logs right into the heart. In comes the punch. Hi, Rubik. Bye, Rubik. Two kills going the way of the retry. Who are still alive and kicking in this. And Viper actually rotating around for that as well. Didn't really get anything off the back of it. Just, so just rotates back. Sitting on 2k gold. If he wants to have a mech, he has it. Yeah, and that was just relax making a big misplay they didn't need to dive that tower and they should have known that tp re rotations were going to come through they wanted no fear they didn't have omni that no mana it was a bit of a mistake tmw going ahead and ball lightning away from the stun that just barely misses he's actually got to pull down hard oh my god what a oh, play oh punch the edict team of he still has a bit of mana but he's uh, really hungry for that kill it's going to be killing him though that edict that is not worth dying for, Tame My Wild. I think that the playstyle of the retry is rubbing off on Relax, and it is not paying off. It is um, actually, no, then comes the kill. The mechanism, as you called, Nubik will heal up Eid and will take the kill on the Rubik 9 to 7. And uh, with this, I mean, the retry, they are ahead in gold, they are ahead in experience. If they can keep this aggression going, if they can continuously bait out Relax to play a playstyle that, obviously, by the looks of things, the retry is a bit more comfortable with, well, then they're going to be doing well this game. They really are, um, and they can fight early with this mech now, and this is kind of a period where TMW and the rest of his team need to sort of focus and buckle down. They need to get an Orchid up on himself, they need to get more items up on the Juggernaut, they need more farm right now because they can't farm and they can't fight, excuse me, when they have to deal with the mech, despite the fact that Smacklow is now level 8, so he does have natural order, he does have actual spirit. 
there there are some ways for them to fight, but I feel like they need to fight sort of kind of just roaming around and ganking and picking heroes off, not an aggressive five on five engagement. Even if they have Omni Slash, Phase Drum is done for Nexus. I don't think anybody has a Midas in this game. Wow, this is like the first game I've seen with no Midas at like eleven minutes. Well, who needs a Midas if you're getting kill gold from killing people anyway? They take the, they take care of the Rubik. Um, and they force back Shakalo, who actually uh, were, were looking to make a play. But it is it is the retry that has the pressure. They have the time limit on them, and I think they're doing really well so far. They have also got the Shrek with level 4 armor, so or level 4 edict, so once they are ready to actually take down towers off the back of their kills, they'll go down real fast. And that is the strength of their lineup, because that's normally something that in a, in a heavy aggression game like this, that's normally something that lags. You might get kills, but you don't get any buildings off the back of it. But if you have a Lashrak there, well, top tower then that's all going to be sorted out. Then that's all going to be fixing itself. And just eating those towers will melt like crazy. Yeah, but the thing is, they cannot fight into another Titan with Astral Spirit, really, at this level. They need to level up a little bit more, even though they have the mech. Uh, they need to go for another lane that the Elder Titan isn't there in, or they need just to pick, pick off towers off the back end of kills, like you mentioned. Uh, they didn't do it that time around, but you saw that Satin Haas just put up, and that's a good reason. I mean, Edict is so good at pushing down towers, they just go down like butter. And that's why Leshrac, who was one of my favorite heroes, by the way, is so good at pushing, just because that Edict is so strong. And a lot of people really didn't like that. Uh, change the edict where they change the animation. I don't think it's that big of a change to be honest with you Other than the fact that it's still stealable a lot easier um, Still though they have a bit of time. They're working on denying top tower. They've got oh. farm on their piper They're They've got a shackle mid, on no tail like. the split earth no hope for him the double damage rune on no fear helping out Teleporting coming from shackle though. So again, they won't be able to take a tower off the back of that one But I mean killing off team my wild he is the one whose back is supposed to carry it to till Juggernaut can take over. And if they can keep shutting him down, it's gonna be very good. Snowball coming in, they wanna take that Shakalo as well from the side. New big punch! You're dead! Now towers can start falling here yes. in the middle lane, because yeah. relax, they cannot do anything. They have to keep farming that Juggernaut. And they just, you know, they don't have anybody else. Fortification, well, they had to get it out of the way at some point, right? Yeah, exactly. That fort will save the tower, but only for a moment. The, just, the tower damage is too strong, even without Edict, and it's just going to go straight down. You're absolutely right. They cannot have Juggernaut going into the fight. There was a TP canceled from somebody. I didn't see who, but anytime you get the Elder Titan, you're good to go for a push, it looks like. However, with that happening, Nexus does push into the top lane. He also has got 1,300 gold in the bank. He still may go for Midas at this point in the game if they think it's going to go a little bit longer, but Unstable is getting charged from PGG. He does hit up Chemical Rage before he stuns himself smartly, so that was a little bit of an okay play. Yeah, but in the yeah, he still stuns himself up. Let's see what Nubik is gonna gonna buy. Ooh, he's charging up a stun again, going for it. The zip is there, the stun will come out though. Let's see if it's gonna hit. Yep, it's gonna hit, but next under the tower, and there's nobody else that can back up PGG, so he backs off. And yeah, Agonims for Nubik will be the next one as he's waiting for the rune. He gets lucky. Ooh, an invis one at that. And this is one that Relax does not scout out because they only got two words up which are not near Roche Pits. This should be the end of Shacklow right here. Yeah, and that ward doesn't catch anything out, and now the snowball is going to go through the viper strike, and they're going to punch him. Yep, yeah, that TP was just like he was desperate. That's a panic TP. Yep. He should have just like focused on buying something rather than trying to hit the TP. But uh, the first minus of the game is done by a venomancer. Interestingly enough, that's all right. Okay. Yeah. By the way, for people wondering, um, Navi versus Aspera won't start until after this one is over, so don't worry about that one. So all games will be fo followed. No pressure. Dyer's You're not gonna miss any games if you stick yourself right on this stream. Yay! It's good. We got some fun games today. Just saying. Yeah, we've already had one. And we've had one great game. And this one's shaping up to be another good one. 13 to 7. The retry working on another 2 1 tower. And it is gonna fall. Yep. They're gonna try to fight this as well. The snowball. But TMW just says, I'm done here. I'm oh, out. PGG still charging up the sun. They might still be able to turn this around. The sun comes out. Tim and Wells getting sun still behind the tower. He's gonna be safe. The rest of the retry actually backing off. How, like, look at this. The retry has evolved. Normally they would just continue running in. But no, they back off knowing that if they dive there, they might be giving up their lead. Still very sensible. I mean, they've taken down two tier one towers. They've lost their own one on top, but that's understandable because they've just completely abandoned that lane. I would say the retry, just take out that last tier one tower and then continue for the tier twos. Just surgical precision, just take out all the towers, go for Roshan, go for high ground. And I think they can. If they keep the, yeah. the, the tempo up that they are having right now, 
then they definitely can. Yeah, especially if they get an Aghanim Scepter 2 on this Viper, because his farm is absolutely outstanding. Now we see some engagements bottom, potentially. Yeah, Shackle nah. doesn't hit, though. Tamar Wild is going for an Orchid. It's not yet there. Only has one Oblivion staff ready. We'll see if he gets it up in time, as we do have uh, Eid with a nice stun up on Tamar Wild. Just harassment, though. He knows he can't go up on that one, as the Shackle doesn't latch again. Dread, level 8, hasn't stolen anything, surprisingly. I'm not even trying. Tim Wild actually comes in to force out ed his edict. Hey! Ed edict? Yeah, fun. Smoke oh, up for oh the my. retry. Sorry, I just had to make that one. That's alright. PGG top lane. Oh, he has to be careful. He's charging up a stun, but the only slash comes out. The chemical rage isn't enough. The mechanism co doesn't come in in time, but with Nexus out of mana, healing word is not going to help him out because it gets killed off. I don't think he can get away from this one unless he can. No, he doesn't have mana to TP, so good luck with that, Nexus. You are dead. Elder Titan dead in the bottom lane. In the meantime, Nexus gives himself some vision, and there he goes. Down he goes indeed. Elder Titan did die on the on the top lane there, and they they do give an alchemist stop, but or on the top lane on the side of the retry. But overall, that's a brilliant trade. Still getting the Juggernaut, which is of course now the biggest threat on the side of Relax. Yeah, he was just out of mana. Had he had 15 more mana, as soon as he gets hit up with the Viper Strike, he TPs away. There's no way he gets stunned or anything from the yeah. Viper. So it's sad he didn't have enough mana. He had no stick charges as well to get him there. Uh, he tried juking around the trees with an excellent play. Almost did it, but not quite enough. Um, and that means more uh, farm time for Viper and more gold as well, which puts him 300 away from his Aghanim Scepter, which will be at about 18 to 19 minutes, which means that's really when I think they start fighting because that is 12 seconds of cooldown for Viper Strike. He throws it out twice in a fight, if not more. It's a lot like Trek in that regard, and the range is even better. So it's going to be disgusting to deal with. They still have Midas's on the side of Relax, and if they can relax and do fine throughout the mid-game, they will be able to get back into it. The puns! The puns are yeah, coming well, out strong. I, you know, I try, I try. Yep, yep, yep. Well, we'll see if they at least get a tier 1 bottom. That's, that's their intention. There's still fortification up on the retry. They might try to defend it. I think they should. Yeah, they're... Well, no, they're gonna tr defend middle instead. Tima Wild coming in there. The snowball there as well. He will be uh, forced to zip away, but very low on life. Doesn't have enough in his bottle. <laughs> to, did he just punch a creep? Yeah. But doesn't have yeah, enough in his bottle to so do anything else. Oh, and deny the tower. They still lose the bottom one, but the nine one mid is still pretty decent to have. And they force, of course, like I said, Timo Wild back to base. They're still holding their grip firmly on this game, I feel. Yeah, absolutely. They are. They are. Um, but it, it is going to get more difficult as the game gets longer. So, But the Aghanim Scepter, like I said, is going to do some work. And... Uh, it's just it's a it's a period of time where as relax you try to find map control you try to find room to farm and and it, it's slowly slipping away and the more it slips away the tougher it gets so it's yes. a bit of a pull and push kind of scenario here the question is do you as relax go for smoke and try to find somebody out and with the items that they've got they can grab a couple of kills because they're not playing as five just yet for the retry oh boy oh indeed PGG throwing a stun out if he can nope Ends up stunning himself. Nexus, though, still getting shackled to a tree. That's an uh, interesting shackle to see. Split Earth, Edict, Nexus. He doesn't have any hope left, or does he? He has an Omni Slash. He goes for it. He gets a kill, and he dies afterwards. Still a useful trade for the retry as the Golden Courier braves, bravely flies through some enemy creeps, but he's fine. I was never worried. And as you just saw, I mean, this is the only the fourth time that a Viper finishes mech and Aghanims before the 20 minutes mark. And he's even very far ahead. I mean, he is 19 and a half minutes in. This is a yeah. very, very fat Viper. He is sitting almost 2k gold higher than the Juggernaut, who does have a Hand of Midas, by the way, which is on cool off cooldown, which he cannot use because he's dead. Yeah, he's about very about sad that about that. Yeah. Yeah. Unfortunately, even though he did trade his life for a less track and, and he got something out of it, it's just not worth it when you're giving golden experience to the Viper who's already so far ahead right now. Um, but he will fall off eventually like I keep talking about. So they they are pushing towers down. The tier 2 is still alive. Edict's not doing a whole lot of work. The, oh, top lane, TMW. Yeah, PGG will be uh, staying alive. Pop this chemical rage. Team of try to teleport out, but he can't. Eid, stunning him up. Boom. You're dead. Another nice skill coming out of the retry. They are really making this lineup work for them. Boo to you, whoever doubted the retry here in this game with picking up the tusk. Okay, I was one of those. 
Yeah, I think everyone really doubted it. But <laughs> it hasn't been it hasn't been Tuscar doing all the work. It's been the Left Shrek, yeah, honestly. It's been the Left Shrek, the Viper, uh, doing most of the le heavy lifting for this part of the game. Tusk has gotten a couple of you know catchouts, but uh, Snowball's not been super effective. Nor has the Ice Shards, nor has the Walrus Punch. But being involved in the game is also very important because with that Frozen Shizzle, he will be able to gank pretty effectively, slow down the uh, uh, Juggernaut with his attack speed, slow with Sigil. So once that gets leveled up, that'll be even better. The problem is, though, they, they are wasting a little bit of time. They can go for pushes right now after these pickoffs with TMW, you know, going down. They are going to go for a Necro Book on the Tusk, and maybe that's what they're going to wait for to finish before they start pushing in once more. Yeah, you're right. I mean, they are kind of giving relaxed time. Time to get back to their senses and get some core items running. They have the mechanism on the Elder Titan now as well. So Relax is going to try to contest the pushes from this point onward, and that's... That's a trouble for the retry because five on five fights when an Elder Titan is in the game on the other side are just just very scary. How are they gonna fight up against that Elder Titan? With the mechanism. Well they gotta wait. They yeah. yeah. With the mech. Yeah. But they still do need to wait a little bit. The Necro books will help them in that scenario. Astral Spirit's gonna catch things out. Uh, but everyone is pretty much around mid for the retry, and if they wanna go for one, they can. But looks like they're just going to head to Roche instead. Uh, they maybe don't go for it. I think they, they have the medallion up on the Alchemist, so they could go for it. But there is still potential that with this ward, uh, Relax do come in and try to fight it. So they'll back off. They're not ready to go for Roche just yet. They want more map control. They want more tower control and presence on the map. But that's a Blink Dagger already for Dreaded 22 minutes. I'm not sure how he farmed that up, but he certainly has it, which is very nice. Yeah, Rubik with a Blink Dagger can steal himself some more nice spells. I mean, we haven't had, we haven't seen the impact of Rubik all that much. He's just been uh, in a fight. He has been picked off because, of course, the Raytrain knows that he can be very powerful with this amount of spells that he can steal, amount of good spells that he can steal this game. As uh, we have got someone chasing down Tama Wild, PGG coming up with a stun, looks for and actually finds it. Tama Wild, you should have zipped, my friend. You're dead. That's like one of the, like it's the third or fourth time he's gotten caught out of position and died because of it. And he's got seven deaths to his name on a Storm Spirit. That's the most in the game, I believe. That's very unusual for him. He's, I know he's a good Storm player too, so it's weird to see him make those mistakes. And because of those mistakes, they're getting more room to farm. And you could see they might even try to take Roche off the back of this. Uh, they will decide against it because they had to deal with the Plague Wards. They know they've got Vision here on the Roche Pit. So they, they decide against it and they're going to try to push mid out. But I don't think there's any way they can push in with the Elder Titan still alive. We keep talking about that. Yeah, KSI also with the Hand of Midas. They realized that this game would be one that they would be taking late. And if it's like him anyway, then why not get yourself those Hand of Midas's? Still think the retry should continue to push. They think so too. They're looking for an opening here in the middle lane. And we'll try to. I mean, there is still a fortification again. So we'll see that probably come out the moment that Lushrak turns on his uh, his edict. As it should be uh, should be soon. Ed keeping very safe here in the back. And actually, team of Autumn jump on the jump in. They go for the Viper. In comes the Alchemist. Still throws out a double stun. Now they go. Mechanism does heal the supports up again. But KSI, he'll be dead anyway. He'll be the first one, first one to die. In the meantime, the Tusk looking at the Elder Titan, the Edict helping out, the Power Shot cannot run from that. Three dead on the side of Relax, this should be a Tier 2 tower, if not more. Maybe a Tier 3 and Roche, or just Roche off the back of this. It looks like the latter, they will be going for that, and they should be able to take that without any contest. Yep, and I'm honestly of the thought process that if Nexus is in that fight, it maybe goes a bit differently. But he knows he didn't, he couldn't do nearly enough, I think, just yet. He might have only gotten a kill or two before the rest of his team died. Still would have been better than what happened, but he does get time to farm. Space was created. He will finish up his Aghanim Scepter at 15. Um, they will grab the Roche, though, and that's an Aegis for a Viper. And they were pretty tanky in that fight. They had a lot of damage taken, but it just wasn't enough to grab any kills for Relax. So now the question is, was it worth it to get the Aghanim Scepter on Juggernaut but lose three heroes and a Roche? And I'm not so sure. That's, that's a difficult one to think about. Yeah, and it all depends on how aggressive the retry is going to be with that Aghanim, or that Aegis. Are they going to just continuously, again, start pushing down those tier 2s? Because they've had them standing for a while, and I still feel like they are kind of racing against the clock here. And to stop that from, like, to, to do that, you have to start, start pushing, right? But 
not doing that just yet as Dread was uh, looking to see if he could steal a spell, but already no fear and getting himself away fast enough. No fear, by the way, going for a side of the vice on his Wind Ranger. We've got ourselves Eid looking to go for BKB, logical item for the Shrek, as said earlier. You want to just stand there, run around with your Nova and Edict on. And uh, to do that, you kind of need a BKB. In the meantime, on the top lane, we do have CGG dying. He kind of got cut out by the double damage from Storm Spirit. And of course, also the Elder Titan being around there. But PGG, he has been the one that died four times so far, so he's almost half the kills that Relax has in total. And he's sitting on 3,500 gold. What is he going for? Is Don't tell me. It's gonna be... I, I, I'm hoping it's not gonna be... Oh, no fear. What What would you do there if you already just saw your teammate die there, right? There will be uh, no Vortex, no mana up on the Storm. Well, he's very lucky for that one. And actually, they're going... Yeah, I don't know why he was there. Yeah, that was... But they will turn this, or at least try to. I don't think it's gonna happen, though. Yeah, they're all back already from the side of Relax. Yeah, with the Alchemist with 3,500 gold, I'd say if with that money, probably f try to farm up an Assault Curass, maybe, and see if you can get to it, considering that you're already this far ahead. Might as well uh, pick that up and help your team out getting more armor. Uh, you can see that Viper has a Reaver, so Heart of Trask is probably his next item, and that's pretty damn good. Uh, they are pushing in the mid lane. You look at the Dire team right now. Dread's already here. Looking at the tier... Oh, he's he he's pushing this in with Fade Bolt. The tier 2 tower is going to take damage, but it's only a, a Rubik, so he's not going to be able to do much here. That's a... Midas coming out for the other 10 at 27 minutes, apparently. So that's interesting. Third one. Third was a charm. No people come back middle to try and defend that with the help of PGG. They should be able to take the tower, at least. Well, they forced out the fortification. That's nice. The only thing they have to deal with now is to make sure that they push again within the coming... Six minutes, is that the cool and I'm like five minutes right now. Oh, Vortex, they go for the toss, can't do it though. Viper Strike does get dodge but tame a wild, pretty decent, but of course with an Aghanim Scepter there. Oh, Viper going for a heart, he's already so tough to kill already, he's 703. Oh, he's gonna be such a tough cookie to take. Yeah, they need to get a lucky either a solo Omni Slash, they need to hit a Stomp, a Split Earth, they need to do a lot to really bring this guy down with the mech. They gotta keep him stun locked as well. Easier said than done. The, I mean, really the pure victory for Lax right now is the fact that they haven't lost any Tier 2 Towers since that bad engagement mid. They've kept everything sort of even. They've been able to farm. The Orchid's done for the Storm now. Jug has his eggs like we already talked about. Plus 2,000 gold in the bank too. So Relax is getting to a point where they're starting to maybe think that they can turn this around. And they needed to try, to try to get to the high ground at, you know, about 25 minutes. They haven't done it yet. They haven't even taken a Tier 2 Tower. But they did get three kills in a row. So, you know... It's going to come down to the next big engagement, I think. Will they have enough damage here to take down the retry? It comes down to mech usage, it comes down to the Viper Strikes, and it comes down to can Nubik get, of course, uh, a couple of kills? Can he survive in this engagement with the Aegis? You do see the Plague Wards are just making it very difficult for them to push into. There's a lot of them up right now, and well, Dread can steal a lot of spells. Acid Spray is a decent one, but I think he wants Viper Strike or some sort of AoE spell. Would be nice, too. Yeah, we'll see if they try to, uh, to go in for this. The Edict comes out, the tower will drop. Words or not, there they come. One more hit, come on, people, 10 health. Well, the Siege Group will take it then, so that's nobody taking the last hit. In the meantime, Wind Ranger, what are you doing there? <laughs> Before staffing herself out, because she was kind of in the danger zone. Middle again, Tame Wild trying to pressure and trying to force some TPs out. He is successful, Nubik is back, but they did take the towers, which is, or tower one, uh, which is, of course, the one thing that they wanted to have. The retry. Two more towers to go for, they still have that Aegis, but it's not going to be lasting for a very long time anymore. It will be gone in about two minutes, so... Well, I think they, they like, still... I, I, I know we said a previous game, right? Where we said, like, this team is going to take a late, and the other one, you know, wanted to pressure, pressure early, and in the end we were wrong with that. So I don't want to completely lock out the possibility of the retry winning late game, but it is going to get significantly harder, especially due to the fact that they have no hands of Midas's. Yeah, and another thing is BKBs will be very important in this game, or at least something with magic community, something with magic or spell block would be very nice too. So if they can get that on Relax, it's another game where it's going to go you know, their way most likely, unless they make some mistakes like they did in the previous game. But well, now it's going to be difficult because Viper has a heart of Trask, and he's pretty much almost as far as he's going to get, at least for now. Until they take more towers, but that's gross. He's got one minute left on Aegis. They want to try to fight uh, with that, and, and at least try to get rid of it, um, and be aggressive with the Viper. You know, if he loses his Aegis, you don't have to do something too crazy. You don't have to, like, fight and throw all your heroes there, but they got to do something. Nexus in the top lane. Uh, he's going to take stun. He has Blade Fury in two seconds. I don't know if he's going to get out of here a lot. Well, 
And he's gonna Omni Slash, but I don't think it matters too much. There are too tanky, too much creeps around, and he can maybe try and teleport himself up, but it will be too much damage indeed. He dies. Nubik might not have used his uh, his ages for that, but that's still a very good kill. I mean, still, if you look at the net worth chart, it is only Nexus that is keeping up with the top of the retry. And, I mean, there are not even that many towers behind, right? There's only one tower difference in this scenario, so the retry is just doing... just. Pretty nice for themselves. I'm not gonna do, do amazingly, say amazingly well because the gold graph is actually only 4k in their favor, and the experience graph 7,500, which in one team fight could be totally turned around again. But they are not yet uh, getting behind. They're not yet out uh, out farmed. Their time right. limit hasn't yet come. So yeah, go if again. there is time limit, and yes. and I think that's a big indication with that Aghanim Scepter usage from Relax's Juggernaut is that. If you're only doing that amount of damage to two heroes in a creep wave, you know, what are you going to do in a 5-5 five and five team fight? Now, granted, you're going to have help from Natural Order, from Stomp, like we see here, but still. Um, it, this is, I think, if you're if you're on Relax, you're thinking, this is problematic. We're having to sit back and defend. We are split pushing at least, but and there's a Necro 3 up on one of the heroes. There's another Necro book in the game as well. What do you do in this scenario? You lose your tier 2 towers. Stomp does fly. It only hits on one, though. So, that, at least they can deny Ooh. with the Plague Wards, which is a nice play coming up from KSI. That's yes. very nice, but still, it's a tower gone. It's and a tower gone. And they've only got one outer left. Uh, PG actually teleporting, it's, it's charging a stun up, looking for Tamer Wild, doesn't find him though. Pops the Chemical Rage, will be able to live through it, but that was it would have been a nice play if Tamer Wild got, would get caught out by that one. But yeah, I mean, with the tower now gone, that's their, their major thing out of the way. They can now go bottom, take down the last tower, and after that, one fight... I mean, that's a scary thing as well, right? They're still up against the Lashrak. If the retry wins one fight near the base of Relax and the creep wave of the lane that they're fighting in, or of the different lane, is pushed out in favor of the retry, they don't need that much to take down an entire lane of Rax. That edict is just so incredibly strong that they'll be able to do it. And it's just... It's it's scary. A relax, they definitely... If they aren't feel the pr don't feel the pressure already... Well, they should be feeling it now. And those Hand of Midas's, I'm not sure if it's going to be enough. They do try to continuously force them back, though, by pushing out the other lanes. Now, we again, again, t Tame a Wild mid pushing. He's sitting on 3.2k gold, Radiant's by the way. It's quite rich. Is under what is a good thing to note for Relax is that we haven't seen a 5-on-5 five five engagement this entire game. Every engagement have either been 4 or they've just been pickoffs, just just regular fights. There's not been any real 5-on-5s that they want to engage in, not yet anyway. And that'll come soon for Relax because they're going to have to do it when high ground comes. Uh, but for now, they have to sit back and play their own kind of split push type of game. Unless they lose, you know, a couple heroes or a set of racks here or there, then that's the problem that they get picked off. Oh. But they're actually killing PGG. Yeah, and he stuns up himself, but he gets some backup. And again, I mean, <laughs> this was both the Rubik and the Storm Spirit sitting at that tier 2 mid for quite a long time. They didn't get it. Oh, they go in, though. The Omni Slash. Wind Ranger dies. Le Shrek as well. That's 2 for 0. And they should be able, maybe, to get PGG as well. But in comes the Tusk. The Ice Shards. They lock in Tame Wild, but he's able to sip himself out. The Snowball's still charging. It finds some people, but he's by himself. Hart, what are you doing? They turn it around. They stun him up. In now comes Nubik, but he is three versus one. Can he actually do this? He forces at least a couple out. Dread will be able to teleport himself up, but Tame Wild not so lucky. Still three on one, though. Still three on one. This was the first fight that Relax actually forced out themselves, and they were able to at least get away with it most of the time. Losing their Storm Spirit, definitely not a good thing, but the Juggernaut got himself a kill two kills actually which is really yeah good. that that was huge that was just such a bad engagement from the retry they all tp back in a little bit late one by one by one all went down they started chasing you saw heart you're like what are you doing 100 percent correct why are you there you die unfortunately they do get tmw uh for retry but that's not a big victory considering like you said they got kills on the juggernaut he's now got his of course equal song and Dre gets hit up, taking a lot of Viper Strike damage here. Wow, he is very low. And he probably is... dead. Nope, he's alive. Nope, nope, nope. I was never worried. Next is actually going to only slash this one. In the meantime, doesn't look like Nubik or PG really care. They go for Shakalo, who lives through it. And again, another one lives through the damage, through the poison of Nubik. They go for Nexus, but Nexus, he is going to be able to kill off Viper. That was 1,200 gold. He Blade Fury TPs himself out. This could be the turning Butterfly. point that Relax was were, uh, was hoping for. It it could be the beginning of the end. They still find Tamo out. Again, they get, come with the snowball. They punch him. They kill him. 
It's great, but losing the Viper and giving 1200 gold to the Juggernaut is very scary. He has a butterfly. Yeah, he just bought that out right after. He, that's exactly what he did when he's like when he when he got back to base. Like, all right, that's butterfly time then. So, and you saw a stat in the Haas put up. It said after the 40 minute mark, Viper is under 50 percent win rate. Uh, I, I'm not sure what the numbers were, uh, but it was something small. So with that, he is down for 26 seconds. It doesn't matter if you have a heart of Trask. Juggernaut's going to be doing work eventually. Plus the team around him with Split Earth, or sorry, not Split Earth, Earth Splitter. Well, that's confusing, I think about it. But anyways, <laughs> yeah. uh, Venomancer building an Aghanim Scepter, which he almost has in about 700 gold, plus his Midas. Uh, the Midases are coming into effect. It's taking some time, but here we go. Relax is okay. They did lose the Roshan and Aegis. That Aegis did go to Tusk. Uh, and that's something, at least. But still, the, the, like again, the clock is ticking. We keep talking about it. Another item could help Viper a bit, but he did go down there. He is actually going for Manta, it seems, or an S and Y as he has his Yashi completed up. That might help him out, but Juggernaut with the Butterfly is nothing to shake your head at. It is, uh, you know, everybody remembers or knows the video that, um, you know, with the Juggernaut and the Juggernaut bitch. Yep. Yes. Yep, yep. And it might just be that time. Might just be that time. They don't have an MKB. The way to deal with him is trying to hit him with... Uh, it's it's only the Viper and the Punch in the end. Uh, maybe Alchemist can do a bit more. I mean, he has picked up a Basher now as well, which might be the, the key to locking him in. They might be finding a fight without him, though. I mean, Juggernaut is on pushing point on the top lane, while the rest of the retry is pushing in bottom. Or middle, rather. I'm not sure if they can do it, though. The Earth Spirit of the, the Shards already go in. Nice stomp coming in. CGG still going in with the Poison. Starts hitting on the tier 3 tower. Not getting stopped yet. Hex up on Tame Amount. Poison coming out as well. In comes the Poison Nova from KSI. Might be enough to force them back, but the retry... They don't show any signs. Now they do. They back off after only taking the tier 3 tower. Of course, looking to heal up from that Poison Nova. Perhaps just to go back in again. They at least have forced the Juggernaut to defend as well. And he is ready for action, I think. Yep, and, and but the thing is, they grab the tier 3, but they don't get it for free. They lose a tier 2 to Nexus, so he does get that extra gold. The problem being, though, look how low these Raxes are getting. And Tusk is going to try to walk in. He has the Aegis. He might even use it if necessary, but they want this range, and they might get it. And the Stomp's going to fly yeah, them. They definitely are getting it. The Stomp still comes out, but one more punch. There you go. That's going to be the crack coming in. Doesn't really do anything at all right now, and that is... With that on cooldown, might be the re the retry is opening. They punch or they they snowball onto the Rubik. He get him killed, but he does buy back. Shuckle turns on his BKB. In the meantime, the Omni slashes. They happen. Wind Ranger buys back. The Aegis gets blown, but they're not all dead just yet. Now the Lashrek goes out, but Nubik's still in this. PGG still in this, and Heart still alive and kicking as well. They are looking to turn this around. The stun up by Shuckle. Can they kill him? Nexus, he is still hitting up on Nubik. He should be able to get the kill, but he is so slow. Nubik turns around, slowing Nexus once again. No Blade Fury, Nubik. He gets out alive. He should be able to TP himself out, but Dread still charging the stun. He actually blinked forward, goes for PGG instead, who gets forced. Four staff into safety will end up stunning himself, but with the chemical rage and he might not die. Never mind, he dies for sure. Down comes oh the shackle, the shackle Nexus. This could be Nexus's death. He still has buyback though. He does go down. He does also buy back the melee racks. Now the target Nubik still alive in this. Surprisingly, the heart really paying off. Can't believe that lived through all of that. He does get forced out right now. KSI still trying to slow him down with the wards, and actually in comes Damo well with a large zip. That should be finally, finally, the Viper still dead after all that time. But they get the range racks. To be honest, if they backed off after the range racks, that would have been a way better fight for the retry. But they do get a buyback out of Nexus, which is also not nothing. Having that on cooldown, knowing that he'll be dead for a very long time next to, next time they kill him. Yeah, that man, he was 20 HP or something away from dying, that Viper, from Nexus. And Nexus gets that kill, that fight goes drastically different. But that Viper strike was just so much slow. Nexus couldn't yeah. deal with it. It was He was in a rough spot there. And, well, he is going to head bottom, looking for Tier 2 Tower now. But the range strikes is already gone. The damage has been done, for the most part, as they say. Um, but the split push is coming through now, and it's going to be strong. So the, the game is still not out of the woods yet for the retry, despite getting one range racks that's really nothing when you think about melee racks is regening or excuse me not regen it's just sitting there just chilling right now as you can see 
Actually, no, it is regening a little bit. Five yeah. per second. And uh, Nexus is down in the bottom lane. Oh! Further. He's got his Aghanim. Look at that wow. shackle, KSI! He just killed Tamar Wow, That was... Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. Am I face bombing in real life right now or what? That was insane. Nexus in the meantime tries to get himself out. Won't be able to do that. He will go down. He is dead for 100 seconds. And oh my god, that shackle. Oh my... Did you light see it? Heaven. Literally light of heaven. Yeah, that was nuts. Oh. No fear... With the oh, shackle yeah. shot, and then the play after that to bait the juggernaut with his omni slash. All of a sudden, you are you're not only omni slashing the heroes, you're omni slashing the uh, the necro book creeps as well. Yeah. And now he's down for 87 seconds because he already bought back, like you mentioned. And now this should be the melee racks if they don't get sidetracked with another hero, that being the elder titan. Even if they kill this elder titan. Oh, oh the no too far no away. away. Comes a stun. Four star from nice four star. Red. It should be enough. Actually, not enough for PG. He just runs in. Go for something else, PG. A good job. Poison Nova still coming out. Dread's still in a lot of trouble. Picks up Nubik. Drops him down, but it doesn't matter. The power shot has already taken him down. Shackle will be next. They should be able to take him down. Did they not get sidetracked too much? One would ask. Maybe, maybe they can go for middle right now, for top right now, and they can take down the Rex there as well. In the meantime. Eid is already there with the Edict, taking down the melee racks on the middle lane. Should be able to do that one. KSI trying to do something. I mean, it's the only lane that he can actually fight against, but it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen whatsoever. This could be the retry winning with the Tusk right now. The snowballs, they're too much. They go in after KSI. KSI thinks, screw that base. I'm joining the Radiant. Going to the other side. The Poison Over still comes out, but he gets punched. Tries to TP himself out. It's not going to be enough. The Split Earth comes out. Maybe he's able to take down Heart with the Poison Ticks. But he just gonna, he's just going to just gonna TP himself out. Should be fine with the Fountain healing him up. It's actually very close. Um, no, he's fine. I was never worried. Well, that is going to be almost Juggernaut back up. Two lanes of Rex now dead. They're looking for the last one. They're going to try a suicide for this. PGG already throwing out a stun just to make sure that they stay away from this. It is indeed Mega Creeps. This is the retry getting Mega Creeps against Relax. Now in comes Nexus. His Omni Slash already on cooldown. That is going to be the retry fighting for this one. The Hex up on Tamer Wild forced out of the fight. Nice Earths that are coming out though, both on PGG and on the last track. And on the Viper, everybody dies. Tamer Wild manages to stay alive through all of that. Never mind. Hello, Wind Ranger. Might still be in some trouble. Get stunned up now with four heroes dead with only Tusk alive. This game is not yet over. One might think it's over with Mega Creeps, but no. They could actually still try to make this happen. They haven't called it yet. They're not backing off. Yeah, but still, this is... I don't want to say it's impossible. Nothing's impossible, but it would take a colossal throw for the retry to really lose this one. They, you, you mentioned they were suiciding for the rats, so that's exactly what they did. They got a little bit too aggressive to try to fight there. They just could have backed off and, and then won the game uh, after a little bit of time here. But uh, no, relax. They, they had that period of time, but that shackle shot really, I think, changed the way this game went. Uh, even yeah. though they only had a range rack gone, relax, tried to push down, and they lost three heroes in doing so. Then they lost more by getting chased down. Then they lost all their axes, and they'll try to push down mid. But everyone's going to be back up in 40 seconds. Of course, the Windrunner doesn't even really need to be there. As long as you have your Viper, your Tusk, your Lush Rack, you can defend pretty successfully. And there's not a whole lot Nexus, nor Shacklow, nor Dread can do here. BKB's done for the uh, Lush Rack now. He can honestly BKB and run out the towers if he needs to with his Edict. Uh, so at this point in time, it's going to take once again a miracle from Relax. And they actually might even back here. I'm not sure what they can do in this scenario. Well, the retry is feeling ballsy enough to try for this. They might as well go for Shacklow. The snowball falling. The split earth is getting dodged by the BKB. The punch is still there, though. And the punch might just be enough with the Edict. Viper throws out one hit. Gets the kill with that Dread. Yeah, that Ghost Scepter is not going to keep you up. Still does uh, try to delay them, at least. Whoa, that's a ha trigger happy BKB. I think that's a, that's a victory BKB from Eid right there. Popped it while Dread was already dead. In the meantime, the rest of the relaxed heroes are not relaxed at all because they're fighting against Megas in their own base. We'll see how long they can keep that up with the retry incoming. Well, not long, I don't think, considering <laughs> they're missing a Rubik right now and that the rest of the retry are pushing in. You're right, they are. 
And with the Edict, with BKB, it is on cooldown, however. Uh, with BKB on the last check when that's up, they could certainly just take Tier 4s, and they can even take it now. But nope, the smoke coming out from Relax, they're just going to get spotted yep. spontaneously. Well, interestingly enough. BKB now up also for the Juggernaut. Knows that he has to go all in. They're going to go for it. They're going to go for no field. Forza Nova coming out as well. In comes the crack. Looking for some damage. The Omni Slash has already picked up the Windrunner. That Earth Splitter hit on three heroes, but apparently it does not matter. They live. Nexus should be the last one to die right here. It is indeed a team wipe. That is a GG call. The retry in style. Take this game up against Relax, who definitely did not have luck today because they had two games where they were doing really well, didn't end up winning them. Well, that was the retry for Relax. We're going to have to be very quick because we're going to jump on to our fourth game of the night, Navi versus Spera. They have waited for this game to end for us to be in time there. So we're going to jump ourselves in there straight away. We'll be right back. More Star Letter coming in now.